welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the common mistakes most people make while taking the situational judgment test. If you are not aware what the SJTs or situational judgment test is, it is a part of the MSRA exam, which absolutely makes no sense. I mean, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. That's the reality. It's an exam whose major topic is the professional dilemmas. If you're not aware of the complete structure of the MSRA exam, I do have a video about it and I will link it down in the cards below and above. But let's begin our video. So the professional dilemma exam or SJTs is basically comprised of 50 questions and you have to do them in 95 minutes. The biggest mistake most people make is thinking that you have a lot of time while you're practicing for these exams. By a lot of time, I mean that people think it's 50 questions and 95 minutes. I have the time of the world. Actually, you don't. Each question has around five stems. Each stem is sometimes two or three sentences long and you have to actually rank them. So it's not a single best question. You have to read each stem and then Think in your mind what is the correct or the best option to go on the top or the least best option to go on the top and obviously you're ranking A, B, C, D, E and therefore it does require a long time. Therefore the 95 minutes are not always enough. A lot of people then after the exam say that we were unable to complete the professional development part of the exam or the professional dilemma part of the exam. Why do I keep saying development? Um, and therefore you kind of run out of time and that is one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make while preparing so make sure that you train your mind to read as quickly as possible think as quickly as possible and have enough time you may not have time to check your answers but at least you'll be able to answer all of them one of the other mistakes people make is not being able to understand what the actual question is asking and you might think that's a very confusing thing. How can a question be asked and the person not know what is being asked? Because the language used in the SJTs is not always very, very direct. Obviously, they want you to think about things which aren't medicine related, but are somehow things that may happen in your life. Um, a common example that I've given in the past, which I was quite shocked to read and I think it's ingrained in my mind is you open the door on like you're in a GP surgery setting and you open the door and you see a doctor and a nurse kissing each other and you know that they're both separately married to other people and therefore there are five options and you have to list what you will do next obviously there are options like you will tell the other partners and stuff like that it's quite shocking stuff is somehow there um and I mean, some people start thinking about this topic and start thinking about infidelity instead of thinking about you're in a GP setting, you're in a hospital or a clinical setting situation and therefore your mind should always be thinking about the patient. And therefore, the best option here, depending on whatever the question is, would be that this should not happen because there are patients involved here and a patient could have easily opened the door and saw this happening. And this is not Grey's Anatomy, so this is not acceptable. And this is the second mistake people make. By reading the question, they think that the obvious context is the question. However, it is not the question. The question is almost always related to the GMC domains and it is never related to whatever the actual question is. We as doctors, we kind of tend to try to solve problems quite quickly. That is another mistake that people make, that they will read the question, they will think about, oh, actually, I would react to this situation like that. And then they answer it like that. I know the questions are basically trying to ask how you would react to things, but that's not how it really goes. You actually have to think about what the examiner was thinking while they were setting this question and what is the acceptable norm in the British society. Obviously, if you're not British uh, or, or if you've not studied in this country, you are going to struggle with that. And again, that is another mistake that most of the IMGs make is that we react to things the way we would actually in real life. And again, that's not what they want. They want to see how you would react on a bookish way, in a bookish way. 
A good example is that if someone comes in and they're visibly upset, and IMG, um, actually, I wouldn't quote myself because I would always ask, but most IMGs would not go and ask the person, or they would ignore the person, or they would carry on their work, even though they are completely patient safe and they're doing their job well and they're very, very efficient. This question isn't about that. This question is about your compassion, your team working skills, and how you're actually going to react in such a situation. And again, what they want is patient safety. You are obviously working very fine, you're efficient, you're doing everything, but if a colleague is upset, if a colleague, say for example, we can bring up drinking and drugs as well, but even if they're upset, would you think that they're going to be safe to be working with patients? Obviously not. And therefore you should be reacting and intervening and asking what's happening and so on and so forth. I know this sounds like a very weird thing, like I don't know that person, why would I go and talk to this person? But in this SJT situation, you kind of actually have to do it. As a huge introvert, one of the biggest things I learned working in the UK was how to talk to people generically. Um, nowadays at work, nobody can tell that I'm a huge introvert. Only my very close friends know, but I have adapted and so should you, especially for the exam. Another big tip, I wouldn't say this is a big mistake, but another big tip I would say is to try to follow the GMC domains. There are only three basic concepts that the SJT exam is going to ask you. The first one is professional integrity. Next one is coping with pressure. And lastly, as I've previously mentioned, is empathy and sensitivity. One of the most bizarre questions I ever came up with during practice sessions was about professional integrity. Things that I never actually thought about, but they're part of the GMC guidance. In fact, if you go and search, there are actually PDF documents regarding this topic. And I actually never ever thought that this could be something that I need to think about. I'll give you an example just to keep the video alive. So, if you're a doctor, you're not allowed to date a medical student. I don't know why that is, but you're not. Obviously, we all know that you can't have a relationship with an active patient you're treating, but there are rules. Say, for example, if you're a GP, and obviously you live with your partner or your I don't know, you're living with the person you're having a relationship with, right? And they also live with, like near you. And so you can't be registered with them as their doctor. So that person cannot register in your GP practice. Even though they're living pretty close to you. So do you guys know how GP practices work? It goes with postcodes. So even though that, that GP might be the nearest GP to them, they can't register to it because you're working there. And if you are having a relationship with, say, for example, a person who's a patient or was a patient, then you have to disclose that relationship to the GMC. And I'm a very personal person. Like, even though I've never had a relationship, but I wouldn't be wanting to, hey, GMC, you know what? I'm having a relationship with so-and-so. It sounds really bizarre, but I'm not joking. If you could go and read the guidelines, it's actually written there. And if you don't disclose it and you get caught, you would be having a GMC investigation against you. So be mindful when, or just don't have, a, just be single. You test coping with pressure very weirdly. And one of the most important mistakes that I think a lot of us make, especially the IMGs, because they're coming in from backgrounds where they have been senior doctors for a while. I came quite quickly, so I was not a senior doctor, so I didn't make those mistakes when I was doing my SJTs, but I have discussed with a few people who have been quite senior in their countries. When they came, they used to make these mistakes. Is the fact that, say for example, you are working in trauma and orthopedics and you're asked to consent a patient for a procedure. Technically, you are not allowed to consent this patient because you don't know how to perform this procedure. Obviously, people from different countries, if they were trauma and orthopedic surgeons, they knew how to consent these patients and so they would answer it in an incorrect manner. Actually, you should be thinking about what the question is stating your standard is. Sometimes a question states you're a CT1, sometimes a question states you're an F2, and sometimes a question states you're F1. And you are supposed to respond in a way the actual grade is in the question, not your actual grade, but the grade that is mentioned in the question. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but you have to be very, very present when you read every SJD question because it's very, very easy to get distracted and start thinking about it from your own perspective 
and not how the examiner has set the question. See, I already talked about empathy and sensitivity, but you should definitely read about the Good Samaritan stuff because essentially it states it's quite confusing if you have drunk and you see something happening in front of you which is a medical emergency do you act on it there is a lot of different kinds of scenarios which go around this topic and everybody makes a mistake um because there are a lot of rules one of them is the good samaritan rule where you would go and help someone regardless of whatever you're doing and then there are things where you're not supposed to portray yourself as a medical doctor or clinical doctor um you're not supposed to dress in scrubs and go for parties and things like that i mean i know it's bizarre i know but we make mistakes because it's bizarre right if it was normal or made sense then you wouldn't be making mistakes in the first place but essentially i would like you guys to go and read that particular topic because these questions do come and there's a lot of practice out there as well and unless you read the guidance you might not understand and still make the mistakes Lee, you should understand the two basic types of sjt questions so as i said majority of them are ranking but there is a type that tells you to select three options and the reason it catches most people is because you're supposed to have a sort of a mm, how to say all three should match with each other so it can't be three separate answers all three answers are going to match each other am i making sense i know it's very difficult i might make another video and trying to guide you how to actually answer a question where you are supposed to select three most appropriate options is the one where the three most appropriate should go together a common one that comes is say for example you did a teaching and you were asked to collect feedback and there are three actions that you need to do every time you do a teaching the first one obviously is to collect feedback from everybody you taught the second one is to basically put it on your portfolio and the third one is to reflect on it if all three of these options are present as one, two, three, they go as a match, they go as a cluster, and these are the ones you're going to select. Lastly, a lot of questions have come after I asked you guys to ask questions on my Instagram regarding the scoring system behind SJTs. Unfortunately, guys, no one knows because they don't really release the questions or the answers. So how they're ranked, nobody knows. How, what is the correct option? And literally nobody knows. If someone tells you that they know what the correct answer is, they're probably lying to you because the GMC has never released any guidelines regarding this exam. So the MSRA exam people have never released this, this particular information as well. So technically, no one really knows. The best option you can do is use the resources available. I will link down the video where I discuss all of them and try to practice and see where you rank when you're practicing. Um, another good tip that I will tell you guys is to talk to people who have actually graduated from the country because they know how to answer these questions. It's all about pattern recognition, which I'm very bad at. And therefore, it is always good to discuss the types of questions that you struggle with, the themes that you struggle with, so that someone else can help you answer those questions or at least make some sense of it. Because essentially, the practice questions aren't going to be repeated in the actual exam. The actual exam is quite different from any of the practice resources. And therefore, you need to be very, very prepared about the themes and the context rather than the actual answers, because no one knows what the actual answer is. I hope that this video helps you and you get a really good SJT score in your MSRA. As usual, if you have any questions, please comment down below in the video, or if you wanna text me on Instagram, more than welcome. And please make sure that you like the video and do subscribe to my channel because it really, really helps me and encourages me to make more videos. And I shall see you guys in my next video. Bye.